little bit of a hiccup getting set up and that two minutes gets chewed up so fast. I'm uh, the shooting editor for Outdoor Life and Field and Stream. And between the two, we've been talking about guns and shooting for nearly 250 years. You know, there have only been a handful of guys who've held this position. And, uh, and I'm the only person who's held the title for, for both magazines. You know, the people who came before me are folks like Jim Carmichael, Jack O'Connor, Townsend Whalen, Bob Brister, Warren Page, Charles Askin Sr. I mean, these guys were all just giants. Um, you know, but one thing most of them had in common was that they were competitive rifle shooters. And that's a, a tradition that I've continued. You know, I really like shooting tactical style field matches. And, uh, you know, PRS, the Precision Rifle Series, has really popularized that format in recent years. And, you know, I've shot some PRS, but, you know, mainly what I do is like team matches and and kind of other formats, but I'm about to jump in to the PRS world in a, in a big, big way. In a couple weeks, I'm headed down to Oklahoma to shoot the PRS finale. And this thing is like the Super Bowl of precision rifle. I mean, there are 150 of the world's top shooters are gathering and you know going uh going at it down there and even though this match is a little bit out of my comfort zone um i'm really looking forward to going head to head um with these state-of-the-art shooters who are all shooting state-of-the-art gear you know to see how i stack up against that caliber of competition i want to experience that firsthand i'm really excited i'm pumped i can't wait to get down there so I built this rifle earlier this year, competed with it all season, and you know it did really well for the kind of shooting I do. But for this match, I completely had to redo it. You know, I shoot mostly these tactical field matches, and the way I had the rifle configured for that, it was ideal. No, no complaints at all. But for a pure PRS match, like at the finale. You know, I needed to uh, make some changes. You know, one of the big ones was I needed to be able to run magazines that could hold more than 10 rounds for the higher round counts that I know we're going to find down there. And uh, I also wanted to get a stock where I could fine tune the balance so that it would, um, you know, handle better off of obstacles and barricades and stuff. You know, because that kind of shooting is just so much a part of what I'm going to encounter down there. <laughs> Impact. So I'm running the 6mm GT this year. It's kind of the new hotness. And uh, what it does is it strikes a balance between the 6 Dasher and those 6mm bench rest rounds on the one hand and the 6 Creedmoor on the other. You know, essentially what it's designed to do is have the accuracy and consistency of the 6 BR family of rounds with the sort of feeding reliability and the ability to easily find reloading components of the six millimeter Creedmoor. And while people will argue up and down about what the best precision rifle round is, I've got to say that uh, so far this little 6GT seems to be getting the job done. So uh, I'm sort of killing two birds with one stone here. I'm under a real time crunch. So what I've done is I've loaded up a bunch of practice ammo with my uh, virgin brass. And that way I can work on some of the techniques I want to focus on prior to the match. And at the same time, end up fire forming the brass so that my match reloads are uh, accurate and dead on. So my rifle has been shooting really, really well. 
but I've wanted to find a milder load that's also super accurate. So I've been experimenting with different types of powders and different charge weights. Um, you know, what I want to do is drop a little velocity and that will help me uh, manage recoil a little bit better and spot hits and misses. And if you can spot more hits and misses during a match, you're just going to rack up that many more points. So uh, I think I might have found my secret mix here. I'm running 34.8 grains of H4350 and it's driving these 110 grain bullets at just a little over 2800 feet per second, which is kind of what I was uh, shooting for. My velocities are really consistent, good ESs and SDs, and the accuracy is just outstanding. So uh, if I decide to roll with this, all I need now is to load up 300 of these for the match. Man, day one of the fit hell. Sun's coming up here in Oklahoma. Just had the stage brief. Getting, getting, our, getting our minds right. I love a good safety brief. It always kind of sets the stage. And man, it's can't wait to get these first rounds down range. I'm excited. So we're kicking it off on stage 12 here called Mogadishu. I think we'd be shooting in and out of this little uh, helicopter chassis and you know this is what I love about this sport it's just like the the, the different scenarios that you get you just don't get in any other kind of uh, shooting event. in front of me, Sneed just finished up, did a good run, and now it's time to blow the carbon off the rings, get the jitters out, and get this thing underway. Oh man, the wind was a little switchy, you know, the time management was fine, the positions felt good, but that wind just goofed me up, that is always the freaking trick. One, you know, I shot well, no mental errors, no equipment failures, but the level of shooting here is so damn high, you know, that every single point, you know, kicks you down half a dozen spots. Well, welcome to day two. I think I might be the only shooter who's from north of the Mason-Dixon line here, and this is like my home field advantage all of a sudden. I don't know how much ground I'm gonna make up, or if, even if I'll make up any, I mean, these guys are all freaking pros here, but, <clears throat> 
you know, mentally, I'm freaking loving this. And you can see up and down these tents, everybody's just huddled underneath them, you know, like a quail trying to get out of a storm. And uh, anyway, this is, uh, this is gonna be really fun. I can't wait to see how this plays out. Yep. Time starts now. Oh man, I'll tell you what, it is sporty out there. You know, this, actually I got five out of 10. I'm pretty happy with it. One of the targets I couldn't see, I was just kind of guessing on a hold based on the T-posts. And I did kind of sneak one in there. You know, the, so I got all my points basically right. on the near target. Ready. But yep. uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. Now. It is tough out there today. Impact! Get back! Get back! Man, I'm using all of the clock on that one. You know, I had a little bit of a hiccup getting set up and that two minutes gets chewed up so fast. But I'll tell you what, to go nine for 10 on an alternating test your limits deal, those little targets are little out there. I couldn't be freaking happier, man. It's, uh, that's an awesome feeling. Ooh, that's it, man. PR Smalley in the bag. Finished on a very sporty stage. Went eight for 10. I really wanted that last, last shot, but you know what? It leaves me wanting more. So uh, I'm gonna try to get back here next year, do it again. But you know, it's a great freaking sport. You know, you have all these targets out here. You know, every stage is a puzzle. You know, hitting these targets under normal conditions is tough. But you add in the time, you add in the movement, you add in the wind, and it becomes a whole different animal. And uh, it's just what I love about it. I think it's what everybody loves about it. It's just dynamic. It takes precision. It takes practice. You know, you sort of got to kind of synthesize all of these skills as a rifleman to be able to do this. And when you pull it together, man, you've kind of done something. So anyway, that's, that's the beauty of PRS.